Hi everyone, uh, I decided I'd make a getting started with Euroscope video for uh, my fellow VATSIM Atlanta controllers. And um, when I moved over from the uh, from the UK to the US, um, I realised that um, nobody was using Euroscope and I, my choices were VRC, VSTARS, VRAM, all of which uh, really didn't cut it for me. So I, I set about creating the sector files for Euroscope for the uh, VATSIM Atlanta Arctic and uh, they're not quite finished but uh, they're, they're close enough to actually use now. So getting started uh, the first thing you want to do is download Euroscope and I'll leave all of these links in the uh, description for the video. Um, you download Euroscope first of all um, install that then download the uh, the latest beta or beta uh, 3.2 a18 seems pretty stable to me I haven't had any problems with that uh, and you what you want to do uh, is install all of that into let me find the folders uh, yeah you want to install them in C Euroscope you know, the installer will ask for a path um, and then the reason for that is my configuration expects certain things to be in that path, C Euroscope or C Euroscope support. Now, when you download my files, well, again, I'll leave a link to Google Drive for that. You should take both things from my uh, zip file and copy them over the top of these two folders on the C drive. And uh, you'll find it overwrites a lot of stuff in Euroscope, and of course, it will create the Euroscope support uh, folder for you. It's just my setup, you can go through and change all of this around uh, if you wish, but uh, I found that this is what uh, what's, works best for me. Also in my download you'll find there are a couple of plugins for Euroscope, uh, they're really just DLL extensions. Uh, one is for the uh, VSMR, Virtual Surface Movement Radar from uh, Pia Ferran, which simulates the Nova 9000 system, and I'm not sure whether they use this in the, in the US but I find it's a really nice extension for Euroscope. And also uh, the Virtual Controller Assistant by Craig Phillips just uh, helps with some things where Euroscope is a little bit lacking. So let's start Euroscope up and uh, have a look. Now when it first opens, it'll ask you for a, P a PRF, a Preferences file. Just choose Main from the Euroscope ZTL. Patiently wait. Okay, so uh, this is loaded with the the view that I was last using, um, and you can switch between views. But uh, first of all, let's just get connected. So top left, click connect. Uh, direct to VATSIM should already be selected. Um, if you are very new to VATSIM, I'm, I'm going to assume that some of you will be brand new watching this, and some of you will be already uh, controllers. But um, the call sign you typically enter for an observer in the US is uh, ZTL, the Arctic that you're a member of, uh, then your initials, and then OBS. Real name. That's really important. Don't put that in right. The supervisors will come for you. Uh, certificate number, password, uh, and then you want to choose facility observer, and then whatever your rating is. Again, if you're brand new, your rating will be observer too. Choose the server that's closest to you. Uh, I find USA West to be a bit more stable than East, which is why I'm using that. Uh, and the rest uh, you can leave alone. This proxy server is only important if you want to run multiple instances of Euroscope on one PC, maybe Euroscope on a second PC. I sometimes run it on a laptop when I'm controlling center. Uh, and also you can actually connect uh, VRC to this proxy with a little bit of messing around uh, if you want to, uh, to use VRC as providing extra views or views that are more familiar to you, then that does work. So let's click connect. This voice communication box comes up first of all. You can close that uh, for now. Uh, and what we're looking at is, is A80 at Atlanta. And you'll see these these tags will correlate, which means they'll change from just primary uh, mode, C, mode C uncorrelated tags. Uh, there you go, we correlated with the flight plan. And that's something we'll come back to probably in the, uh, in the approach video that I'll make. Uh, the next thing that uh, you really should uh, should do is set your visibility center, which is if you look down in the bottom left hand corner, dot viz, I'm going to center on Atlanta right now, and you'll see this little one appear and there'll be a range ring as well if you were to zoom out. That really just tells Euroscope where the, the focus of your attention is. Sometimes when you're jumping between Charlotte and Atlanta, that can get out of step. So I always do that as a as a first step. So changing between views, and these are the, the views that I've set up that I find useful. Uh, you hit F1 and then a, a number. So F1 and then the number 1 just below it is my center view. F12 is A80. 
F13 is a line of ground and this is using the um, the VSMR plugin so VATSIM doesn't look quite like this out of the box uh, and here you'll see uh, a little a little approach window uh, here's a guy here coming in the red ones are arrivals uh, you can ignore no gate uh, in VATSIM UK we used to assign gates to arrivals um, using another extension called vstrips which doesn't really work properly in the, U in the USA um, if the dots are correlated i.e. they're squawking the correct squawk code that you've given to them uh, they will get the little tag appear if they don't you can simulate that by going target release click on them uh, and they, t they just look like what the radar would pick up of something on stand and, and these change based on the size of the aircraft if you ever just want to know who somebody is you can click acquire uh, and, and it'll light up the tag you'll see this guy as he slows down will change into a red tag as well so we'll talk a little bit more about this in the uh, in the ground uh, ground and delivery tutorial so moving on F1 and 5 I just have a Charlotte F1 and 4 is Charlotte approach F1 and 6 I use as more of a um, a radar view for if I'm, if I'm controlling Birmingham then this is where I would just jump onto that radar view I haven't created a separate view for every single air, airport in the Arctic and the same with uh, F1 and 7 then um, this is my ground view this is what it looks like when you're not using the VSMR plugin uh, and if you want to jump somewhere else you can do dot uh, dot center let's do Peachtree PDK and there you go there's Peachtree so back to A80 you can configure these views um, in, in a similar way to how you would in VRC by going to other settings display settings uh, and then you can tick on whatever you want in here now Euroscope wants the sector file set up slightly differently than uh, than VRC uh, so some of this works some of it works more now that I've changed it but all of the the uh, entries that you're used to you'll find under SIDS and stars unfortunately it doesn't do quite such a neat job because it's not expecting these weird separators that are in our sector file right now but uh, typically you can find what you need and I think I, uh, for the most part I've got everything set up roughly in a, in a useful way but uh, feel free to click around with that and if you want to change colors you'll find that in symbology settings as well I want to change the actual aircraft tags you can do that in tag edi editor um, you, there is a heck of a lot of control in Euroscope for configuring this exact exactly how you like it uh, it's complicated and you may find um, it's a little bit overwhelming at first but you'll soon get your head around it so let's uh, have a listen to online controllers. You see online controllers in this uh, little window up at the top right. And you can drag these all around. You put them how you like. Uh, you can say, I don't want to see tower. You can switch off the tower controllers. But um, for now, let's uh, let's listen to approach. So find approach. There we go. Right click, listen to frequency. You can also see the intercom override monitor that some of you controllers will be used to. Um, but for now let's just listen to the frequency and what you'll see is in here in the voice room you can see exactly who is in the voice room which I find really useful in Euroscope obviously completely unrealistic but when you've got someone talking to you and you just cannot work out who they are this can be really really useful it also uh, selects the aircraft as well which is great so right now we've got Atlanta Approach the instructor who's working um, which is uh, looks like Meg and two aircraft as well so hopefully we'll hear a transmission from them next thing you need to do uh, is click on the little headphones um, and note when we selected them and we uh, we chose to listen to frequency what it did was tick the receive voice box uh, under a, the, I already had this line near pre filled in but if it was a new controller that I didn't have in my pre uh, program frequencies it would have created a new entry for me uh, we'll also let's also elect to receive text from these controllers um, everything else here if you're new you don't need to mess with too much um, you just need to find find the right one for you and when we come onto ground and delivery we'll talk a little bit more about that you can also see who's in the voice room here and there you go you see my my obsession in there too all of this stuff um, Land approach, good evening, Delta 1179 with you, uh, 203 descending, uh, 13,000, we're not going to make chipper at 13,000, and uh, we're 300 or faster. 
You can just ignore all this stuff in the background. That's 1179, Atlanta approach. Atlanta altimeter, 3037. Send and maintain 5000. Expect the ILS approach, runway 26 right. Okay, to send 5000 and we're playing the ILS 26 right, uh, Delta 1179, we have Romeo. This was Euroscope's attempt, so you could actually okay. sp actually speak with your voice and it would type the text out for text pilots. It, it doesn't work very well. So uh, nobody I know uses it. You should also jump in this hardware setup and choose your primary and secondary input and output devices. Uh, the rule generally here is if, if wave appears, pick it over direct sound, otherwise just go with what you've got. Um, the squelch is self-explanatory, the mic test is self-explanatory, and pick, pick your transmit buttons for primary and secondary. Um, the way Euroscope works is the secondary button transmits on on a frequency that you're monitoring or you're listening to. If you're you know watching somebody else while they're taking a break, then that was how you do it with the secondary push to talk. Okay, and then the last thing I want to show you, which becomes more important when you're actually controlling, is the little runway block here. This is where you choose your active airports. So you see, uh, I've got more than just Atlanta. I think I've got the A80 airports set right now. You pick the airports, departure and arrival. Um, so let's say I was on approach and I had a tower controller on, I might untick departure for uh, Atlanta because I'm really not interested in seeing the flight plans and, until they appear on departure. You also pick the runways that are in use here as well and that becomes more and more important um, when we get onto how Euroscope automatically picks things like stars for you. American 2319, turn right, heading 180. And the, the last right, one is turn right, so you click on VATSIM once more, uh, click disconnect. Um, and then when you close, you'll find a few things pop up. Do you want to automatically log session data? I have never said yes. Uh, and then it, anything that you changed during the session, it will ask you to, uh, to to confirm and save into the settings files. It tells you this one's modifying the, the surface radar. Um, this was moving another one. This is modifying the main screen text. I think this is because I moved the controller list. Um, unless you really want it to save, I tend to just click cancel all. And that's it. So I hope you found that useful and uh, we'll move on to delivery, ground and local control next. <laughs>